Elon Musk is a polarizing figure. I write this a day after the man made his first SNL appearance, cementing him as a quintessential celebrity CEO. He's famous, charismatic, down-to-earth, funny, and, most importantly, a visionary. He's rallied troops around visions of the future like no other 21st century figure besides, maybe, Steve Jobs. This inherently means that behind every proposal, there's a lot of emotions, often making it difficult to parse fact from fiction, hype from reality, fear, uncertainty, and doubt from just skepticism. Last week, I released a video titled The Good and Bad of Elon Musk's Tesla Loop to a mixed reception. Many called the video half-baked, flawed, perpetuating the term FUD, which means fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It was clear that I would have to follow up this video to tighten up facts, rework calculations, and dispel the blanket term of FUD. And while I'm proud of the progress I've been making on YouTube, I don't believe that this video tells the full story and the context that you, my viewers, deserve. Therefore, I ask for an open mind in the following discussion. The biggest theme of this video is not FUD. It's merely accountability, which is a two-way street. I intend to keep the promises I make to you, my audience, just as I intend to keep those companies accountable for the promises that they make. This isn't a new concept either. Channels I look up to, like CoffeeZilla and Spencer Cornelia, hold accountable social media grifters, charlatans, and snake oil salesmen. I believe by looking at the same engineering and economic backgrounds behind new emerging technology, I can do the same. So before you accuse me of being an Elon Musk hater or doubter, of which you'll see later I'm, I'm neither, please take into consideration my intentions to provide constructive feedback on technology and business tactics being used by The Boring Company, because I think we can all learn a lot from it. With that said, I wouldn't be able to have the information and feedback that I have today without the interaction from viewers like you. Your patience and support for the Engineomics channel has been incalculable. With that said, let's count down the top 10 ways that Elon Musk is an idiot. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the history of The Boring Company, their technology, and the business model of their company. So how did this company get here, besides perhaps having the most successful and fiery promotional merchandising campaign in history? The company's inception was first announced in 2016 by Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk after a series of tweets exclaiming his frustration with the state of traffic. In 2017, the company began research and experimentation on the efficient and cheap construction of tunnels. Most notably, they aided the creation of a series of tunnels near SpaceX's Hawthorne office. This is where SpaceX's underground transportation systems were being tested. With this experience in their back pocket, the Boring Company looked towards their own methods of transportation. And on April 28, 2017, the Boring Company announced their new concept in their YouTube channel, simply titled Tunnels. This now viral video envisions a world without traffic. Simply drive your car onto a sled and let the system take an elevator down before accelerating your car at super fast speeds, traffic free. This system also featured a larger pod which could hold significantly more people. Later on July 20th, Musk announced via Twitter verbal approval for a high-speed tunnel spanning the northeast coast of the United States, which would connect New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. The time from New York to D.C. was announced to be 28 minutes, and given the 226-mile distance between the two would equate to an average speed of 471 miles per hour. The goal was set. That said, the announcement was later disputed by government officials from all four cities. Ben Sarley, a spokesman for the New York City Mayor's Office, said in an email, Nobody in the City Hall or any of our city agencies has heard from Mr. Musk or a representative from his company. This setback was followed up by other, more concrete agreements. The Los Angeles agreed to a tunnel known as the Dugout Loop, which would provide access to Dodger Stadium. Additionally, the Boring Company won a bid in 2018 for the city of Chicago to extend a high-speed tunnel between their downtown and O'Hare International Airport. And finally, in March of 2019, the Las Vegas Convention Center and Visitors Authority gave a bid to the Boring Company for a shuttle system that would traverse the sprawling Las Vegas Convention Center. And that leads us to today. Okay, now that we're all caught up, let's talk about how this plays into the current situation. See, the previous history I mentioned ran the range of concepts, simulations, proposals, and proof of concepts. The thing that differentiates the Vegas loop from these is that this is the first fully realized contract to a real customer. Here are the details regarding the contract between the Las Vegas Convention Center and Visitors Authority and the Boring Company. The total cost listed on the contract is $48,675,000. The project is paid largely by the Las Vegas Convention Center and Visitors Authority's general fund, which largely consists of hotel taxes. The rides will be free. 
That said, the project is currently over budget and costing $52.5 million. Regardless, this cost for just under a mile of track is significantly cheaper than the current American rate of subway track, which costs an average of $600 million per mile. That said, there are financial consequences if the Boring Company can't actually shuttle as many people as promised with the Las Vegas Convention Center loop. For each large trade show that the Boring Company fails to transport, an average capacity of 3,960 passengers per hour for 13 hours, it will have to pay the Las Vegas Convention Center and Visitors Authority $300,000 in damages. If the Boring Company keeps falling short, it keeps paying up to a maximum of $4.5 million. Additionally, here's a list of milestones that need to be completed for a full payout to the Boring Company. The main takeaway here is the last three milestones totaling up to 30% of the agreed payment. All three of these relate directly to capacity of the system. 10% for 2,200 passengers, 10% for 3,300 passengers, and the final 10% for 4,400 passengers per hour. There's an additional somewhat wordy section that says the following. Buckle in for some legal speak. Milestone 8 through 10 may be achieved through performance results of a reasonable number of intended passenger vehicles, approximately 10% of the approximate total vehicles required for system capacity within the active system, supplemented by a transportation engineering analysis to create a performance model verifying an average system capacity of the average number of passengers corresponding to the particular milestone shown in the chart above. So what the heck does this mean? Essentially, this means that to achieve these final three capacity benchmarks, the Boring Company has to 1. Prove that approximately 10% of the desired total capacity benchmark works as intended, with room for an additional 90%. And 2. A transportation engineer will need to provide an analysis verifying that the system, when scaled, will function as intended. The success of the project hinges on meeting these capacity goals. This is the difficult part and the center of the majority of the Vegas Loop's controversy. But first, let's set the stage for this timeline. The contract with the set requirements was signed in May of 2019. As shown in the payment structure, the agreement between the Las Vegas Convention Center and the Boring Company set the certification of occupancy for November of 2020. But obviously, this did not happen and can widely be attributed to the greater worldwide pandemic of 2020. That said, the world is beginning to open back up now in 2021, and Vegas conventions are fastly approaching. The first trade show to be back in the Las Vegas Convention Center is Tobacco Plus Expo 2021 and will occur on May 12th through the 14th. It has a reported 348 in-person exhibitors planning to make an appearance. Transportation will be needed and the clock is ticking. And this is the current state of the Las Vegas Loop. The Loop was shown off to the media in early April to an underwhelming fanfare. Many critics used this footage as proof that the previously promised 2019 designs did not come to fruition. These 2019 renders, now removed from the Boring Company's website, features multiple 16-passenger vehicles and a larger waiting area. The current design only features Tesla Model Xs and Model 3 vehicles and a smaller staging area. These vehicles will hold a reported three passengers per ride in addition to the driver and travel through tunnels at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. They also include RGB gamer lights to ensure that the system would run faster. And finally, since the payment structure is so tied to performance, you may be curious about the actual capacity numbers in the system and how they can perform. In doing research, I've come across multiple fan and critic made calculations and even a simulation with a mix of inconclusive outcomes. That said, to stay as impartial as possible, I will be going solely off of the Boring Company's capacity statement from their website, which states, the loop passenger capacity is a function of the quantity of tunnels, quantity of stations, the size of the stations, and the quantity of operating vehicles. The LVCC loop system is designed for 4,400 passengers per hour with three large stations. This ambiguous statement may be frustrating to some, but that said, there are three schools of thought and I will take each of them to their logical conclusion before summarizing likely results. School of thought number one is total success. School of thought number two is a mixed reception, and school of thought number three is total failure. All right, with the stage set, let's look at the possible outcomes for when a slew of conventions comes back to Vegas. As a reminder, these scenarios are extrapolated from the previously stated facts and metrics. The actual results may vary, but these are my predictions based on if the Boring Company can meet these expectations. 
Scenario 1 is total success. Given that the system passes the occupancy and throughput test, despite the widespread skepticism, there are plans in the works for larger expansions of the Vegas Loop to include the famous Las Vegas Strip, McCarran Airport, and possibly the newly finished Allegiant Stadium, which is home of the Las Vegas Raiders. Hotels and casinos would be responsible for the station cost, and then the boring company could route a tunnel to them, adding them to the loop with very little additional infrastructure. Already, both the Encore and Resorts World casinos have expressed interest in receiving a station of their own. An effective expansion of the loop could prove as a huge leap forward for PRT, or Personal Rapid Transit. Having such a project under their belt would allow the boring company credibility when bidding for future projects. And if the cost to capacity ratio behind the initial Vegas loop are true, public transportation could be sent into a new era of cheap tunneling and flexible individualized transport. In addition, it's likely that the total success scenario would cement confidence from milquetoast cities. Remember the Chicago deal? The planned route from downtown to O'Hare International Airport has stalled after skepticism and a lack of transparency. A glowing testimonial from Las Vegas could reinstate that confidence. Finally, although they're not the ones building the tunnels, one of Elon Musk's other companies, Tesla, has a lot to gain from a wider adoption of the system. First, from a marketing perspective, being the premier transportation method for one of the most popular convention centers in the world isn't a bad perk. Additionally, these tunnels could prove a closed course in which Tesla could test self-driving technology, gain the trust of consumers and regulators before rolling out full self-driving to actual roads. Scenario two, mixed success. While a good amount of the Boring Company systems are already ready for opening, the main concern from skeptics is still capacity. This could come in the form of meeting theoretical numbers but never reaching the promised average of 3,960 passengers an hour or the final 100% capacity number of 4,400 per hour. This could also come about from achieving capacity numbers but failing to implement fully autonomous systems. Currently, the Boring Company is hiring part-time drivers, and based on the average taxi salary in Las Vegas being approximately $37,000 annually, this could add up quick with a full capacity fleet size of approximately 60 Teslas. Drivers alone could cost the Boring Company over $2 million annually if self-driving is not adopted. As far as expansion goes, a mixed success system wouldn't likely sway any doubters. Skeptics would argue that the system fails to deliver on its promise, while supporters would defend the technology and urge skeptics to wait until higher capacity vehicles, more robust self-driving, and potentially more tunnels or lanes. Cities like Chicago who are on the fence would likely revisit the Boring Company contract once the technology is a little bit more proven. And finally, scenario three is total failure. A total failure of the Las Vegas Loop would fail to even reach the most basic levels outlined in the agreement. This would mean not reaching the promised 3,960 passengers per hour in the calculation or in reality. And there isn't unfounded evidence that this scenario couldn't occur. TechCrunch uncovered documents regarding the Vegas Loop's fire code analysis. While the loop is up to code safety-wise, the fire code analysis for one of the three stations limits the loading and unloading capacity to only 100 occupants per 7.5 minutes, equating roughly to 1,200 passengers per hour, a potential bottleneck in the system. As for how the Boring Company will regulate the flow of traffic to its vehicles, ensuring fire safety, there is currently no turnstile or barrier to meter traffic. If the most basic requirements are not met, what would such a failure mean for the Boring Company financially? Well, in addition to the millions of dollars in labor costs mentioned in previous sections, the Boring Company would lose 30% of its construction cost, and then, as mentioned earlier, for each large trade show that the Boring Company fails to transport an average capacity of 3,960 passengers per hour for 13 hours, they will have to pay the Las Vegas Convention Center and Visitors Authority $300,000 in damages, and if the Boring Company keeps falling short, it keeps paying up to a maximum of $4.5 million. In this scenario, the Boring Company would have only received about $29,775,000 of its original $48,675,000 budget. And that is before the cost of labor for the Tesla chauffeurs. This deficit would likely prevent the Boring Company from making a profit on this project and may inhibit future projects. This scenario would likely halt all future expansions until the basic levels are met. The expansion plan should not matter if this initial loop does not deliver. Generally speaking, consumer trust should be the forefront of the Boring Company's efforts, and this is their first impression. 
If the Las Vegas Convention Center and Visitors Authority is struggling with the unfinished consequences of the boring company system, there's a slim chance that others would invest, at least not until the main concerns are addressed and scaled. And what happens in Vegas doesn't necessarily stay in Vegas. If the boring company fails to deliver on the key metrics agreed upon by the Las Vegas Convention Center, their reputation as an affordable transportation provider may be tarnished. With all of this said, I genuinely hope that the autonomous 4,400 passengers per hour capacity is in fact reached by the first convention to prove its validity and reliability. If the boring company can get an early win under their belt, they would undoubtedly have cities knocking on their door looking for their own loop and setting off a revolution for transportation everywhere. But based on the current lack of transparency with capacity and self-driving timelines, the two key performance indicators of the system, its initial success is still up in the air. So here's my challenge to Elon Musk and The Boring Company, because I know that you're watching a small YouTube channel's analysis of your system. There's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt surrounding the promises made to the Las Vegas Convention Center. My challenge in the least condescending and most genuine way possible is to prove the haters wrong. Skeptics for years have said that electric vehicles would never catch on, and Tesla proved them wrong. Skeptics also said that private space travel was impossible, and now SpaceX is sending reusable shuttles to the International Space Station. The Boring Company has made huge strides in expediting the tunneling process and charging forward with innovative transportation methods, but if they're aiming for widespread adoption and future contracts, they're going to have to prove themselves in the short term and deliver tangible products with their customers. They have less than one week until the first convention returns back to Vegas. Will the Las Vegas bet pay off? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And one last thing, I will be making a trip to Las Vegas in September and will do everything in my power to investigate the Vegas Loop in person. If you want to see a review of my experience or are interested in more content like this in the future, please hit subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit like as well. I appreciate your support thus far. I'm Hank from Engenomics, and I'll see you next time. Bye.